Hi, my name's Victoria. I'm a student at Paramedic and I'm going to be doing a cardiovascular exam on you today. Is that okay? Nope. Can I just get you to confirm your name and date of birth for me? Oliver Bowen, 14th of September 1996. Cool. Um, so as we start, I've got Oliver sitting at a 45 degree angle, which is ideal mm -hmm. for a cardiovascular exam. Um, are you in any pain right now? Nope. Great. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to step back and do an examination of the scene and the patient. Um, what I'm looking for here is any medication or medical equipment that would indicate um, any cardiac conditions. I'm also looking at the patient and his positioning. Um, he doesn't appear to be any, in any significant discomfort or pain. Um, there's no signs of shortness of breath, like excessive use of the axillary muscles. Um, and he appears to be overall quite comfortable. Um, so, Oliver, just for a start, do you have any significant, significant medical history I should know about? No. Um, no surgeries or anything? No. No family history of cardiac or respiratory issues? No. Great. So to start, I'm just going to inspect your hands, Oliver. Is that okay if you can just put them out in front of you with your palms down? Yep. So what I'm checking for here, um, I'm looking at the colour of Oliver's hands and nails, checking for any cyanosis, um, and checking that the colour is the same in both hands. Um, I'm also going to be checking the skin for its temperature, um, and checking for any sweatiness, which there, um, there's no sweatiness and the temperature is warm and the same in both hands. Um, I'm looking at the cap refill of both hands, um, and there's good return of blood flow there, um, and it's less than two seconds in both hands, it's both even there. Um, next what I'll do is I'm going to take a radial pulse, that's okay with you? Yep. So you can put your hands down, just relax. So I'm just taking a radial pulse there, checking the irregularity and strength and rate. And there's a rate of about 70 beats per minute, um, and the pulse is nice and strong and regular. I'm also just going to check that I can find the same regular strong pulse in his other radial, and the other radial pulse, which I can as well. Next, I'm going to check the um, brachial pulse to check again that it's nice and strong and regular. If I could just check in your brachial pulse. Again, that's nice, strong and regular, with a big rate of 70 beats per minute. Next, I would take a blood pressure. Um, this will give me the systolic and diastolic blood pressures, as well as the number between those values being his pulse pressure. Um, I'd be checking for hypotension, which is abnormally low blood pressure, or hypertension, which is abnormally high blood pressure. Um, I'd also be looking at the pulse pressure. Um, if it was quite a narrow number, then it could indicate aortic stenosis. If it was quite a wide number, then it could indicate aortic regurgitation. I'm not going to take a blood pressure today because I don't have a blood pressure cuff with me, but in a normal examination, this is what we do next. So I'm going to inspect Oliver's neck now. So if I can just get you to firstly put your head back slightly and look at the wall. Here I'm checking the jugular veins and I'm looking for any increased jugular venous pressure, which there doesn't appear to be. I'm going to palpate the liver to see if this increases the jugular venous pressure, which it doesn't appear to. This is good, if there was increased jugular venous pressure, then that could indicate um, right-sided heart failure or tricuspid regurgitation. Oliver, can I just get you to look at me this way with your head slightly back, so I can check the other side. Again, that looks clear. I'm also just going to oscillate um, your carotid pulse to check that this is clear, uh, strong and regular. And so again, that's nice and strong and regular on both sides. Next, I'm going to inspect Oliver's face. Um, firstly, Oliver, can you just look at me and pull the lower lid of your eye down? Here I'm looking for um, conjunctival pallor, um, which there isn't, uh, which is good. If there was, then it could indicate a sign of anemia. Um, I'm also looking at Oliver's mouth to see if there's any signs of cyanosis, discoloration or blueness. Um, there isn't any here. If there was, it could be a sign of hypoxia. Oliver, if I can just get you to open your mouth for me um, and place your tongue to the roof of your mouth. Here I'm checking for any signs of swelling, inflammation or deformities, which again there isn't any. If I can get you to give me a big smile to show me your teeth and gums. Here I'm checking for dental hygiene, um, which is good. If there was bad dental hygiene, then it could indicate signs of bacterial infection. Um, now I'm going to start the chest examination. Uh, normally we'd expose the chest to this, however given this is a video examination, I'm not going to do that today and just do what I can over the shirt. Um, Oliver, firstly I'd like to um, palpate your sternum if that's okay with you. Yep. So what I'm going to do here is just go down the breastbone 
checking for any irregularities or deformities, um, which there isn't any. Next I'd like to listen to the valves of the heart, if that's okay with you. So first I'm going to start with the aortic valve and pulmonary valve. Um, these are on the second intercostal space, um, on the left and right sternal edges. I'm going to do this by listening with both sides of the stethoscope. So we get second intercostal space. And that's all clear. Next, I'm going to be looking at the um, tricuspid and mitral valves. These are on the fifth intercostal space at the lower left sternal edge and the mid clavicle line. And again, these are both clear. Or if I can get you to sit up for me, I'm just going to check and also take the base of your lungs, if that's okay with you under your shirt. Yep. Cool. If I can just get you to take a nice deep breath in for me. And again. Great. So all of my oscillation was clear and I could find no irregularities. Um, lastly, if I can just get you to put your feet and legs out in front of you. Here I'm just checking for any signs of pedal edema, so I'm just checking that everything is structurally intact and that there's no signs of pitting when I place pressure on all of his legs, and there isn't. So that brings me to the end of the cardiovascular exam and everything was clear, I couldn't find any significant abnormalities, which is great. Um, for further assessment, I would do a 12 lead ECG on Oliver, i take a blood glucose level and also a full peripheral vascular exam. Um, because Oliver's cardiovascular exam was very clear and we found no significant um, abnormalities, I would consider Oliver a low acuity patient. If we found any significant abnormalities, such as Brady or tachycardia, um, hypo or hypertension, if there's any chest pain, uh, especially with a history of cardiac uh, problems, then we would consider Oliver a more higher acuity patient with a need for more immediate further assessment and possibly some immediate treatment.